Hi, BookTube. Hello. Uh, so tonight we're going to be doing a, uh, a couple of uh, book reviews for you. Um, the, the, the books are, they're very, very, very different, but they actually have some surprising similarities that we didn't even realize. The high link. That we didn't even realize were there until we started talking about the, uh, the, the synopses of the book. So we're going to go over them for you. Everybody say hi, Link. Yeah, he's, so we're going, we're going to he's, put him he's down. not liking be, being alone tonight for some reason. Oh. He does this every now and then. But he's such a good boy. Mm. Go to sleep, guy. All right, so we're going to be talking about, for for him, it's The Last Samurai by Helen DeWitt. Yeah. Mm. And, uh, God, what an interesting book. But, all right. Yeah. Let's look at yours as well. And then for me, I read the curious, the curious incident of the dog in the nighttime by Mark Haddon. When when was that book written? Well, why are you gonna ask the hard questions? I can't remember. I don't think I even wrote it down. I totally didn't. Two thousand three. Okay, so it came out in two thousand three. So three years after American Samurai or Last Samurai. I keep wanting to say American Samurai. <laughs> I think that was a crap movie from a long time ago. No, it was a, it's a crap TV show. Isn't it? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. I have no idea. It, not like it matters. <laughs> but um, but the, the synopsis of this book is that a child named Ludo, uh, who, who we find out his name is Ludo in the book, is a product of a one-night stand that his mother is not proud of. And in this book, she refuses to tell him who his father is. Um, it actually becomes one of his obsessions to find out who his father is. But it's told in such such an inventive way. Um, his mother uh, starts teaching him to read ancient Greek and Latin at three years old. And has him reading uh, the Iliad and the Odyssey at four years old. Um, he's, he's, he's speaking... In Greek. Or, yeah, in Greek. He's speaking in these complex sentences at five years old. Um, and... Like he said, that uh, his mother doesn't want him to know who his father who his father is, and and it, with the lack of a of a male figure in his life, she she shows him se seven samurai. Is it like constantly? Yeah, I mean all the movie just seven samurai. She plays it constantly because she's not bored while watching the movie. Um, as it says on on the back of the book, um, his mother thinks boredom is a fate worse than death. And I find that, uh, well, well, that's the way I was as a teenager. And so it's very interesting to believe that uh, someone her age, and interesting to realize that someone her age can still think that way. She's in her 30s. Um, well, she is later on in the book. She's in her 30s. She's in her 20s early on. But she is a very uh, intelligent person. But one of the questions that the book raises is, is, is he covered up? He's trying. He's okay. <laughs> One of the questions that the book raises is, are children born intelligent? You know, are they... Um, well, well, well such, such as Ludo, he really takes to these languages and things like that at a very early age. But how many children these days do we think to teach ancient dead languages you know Especially how how would they take early. to it at three or four years old you know children take to spanish children take to italian chinese at three and four years old american children yeah and it, it never says it never says he's actually a, a natural born prodigy the so it never never explains that yeah, at all so is he is he a result entirely of this this upbringing that she's giving him or is it is it some natural ability yeah that's that's exactly it and um uh the book is based on a theory by j.s mill and yo-yo ma that children are a product of an you know smart children are a product of, of an academic upbringing it's like the blank slate the blank slate theory it is yeah when, when, when children are born they're an absolute blank slate and what we give them is is uh what they take in there's and and is it a bit of an indictment on the on the education system and not just the american education system because this takes place in england um with you know with an american mother 
Um, she's American. She raises her son to be, well, a, a citizen of the world, I guess. Um, which I think is also very important for a child to not to not be uh, pigeonholed into into um, you know uh, a small space. Yeah, but even even just his education aside, this this book, from the way it sounds, it sounds like it has a, a sort of a hero's journey. Yeah. Tale yeah, to we it. were talking about that the other yeah, day. Yeah, it's. At the very the, the end of the synopsis, it says, At 11, inspired by his own take on the classic film, Seven Samurai, um, he sets out on a secret quest for the father he never knew. He'll be punched, sliced, threatened with retribution. He may not live to see 12, or he may find a real samurai and save a mother who thinks bo boredom a fate worse than death. See, it, it kind of sounds like the, the Joseph Campbell... Uh, hero's Journey. Hero's Journey, where he... he, he, get, he gets a quest he has to go through different thresholds and to get there um one of the one of the things i really love about this though is, is it doesn't have the harry potter syndrome which which i'm a fan of the harry potter books too but harry potter had everything thrust upon him you know all 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 of this it was like you know i mean he what he's not the greatest character in the world whereas this little boy takes all of this on himself never complains that he has to do this throughout this book and takes it on himself to go find his father um and it is there are some humorous things in this book i think in a lot of ways th this is a humor book this is this book is just uproariously funny at times it's touching at times it's never like tear jerking it it never gets to that point um it's a debut novel which just floors me. Is it really? It is a debut novel. This lady has written wow. two two novels alone. Although I did hear a, an interview with her saying she had started about a hundred novels before she actually finished this one. Um, <laughs> she said her father gave her a, a good a good old fashioned talking to, <laughs> and uh, she she finished this book. Um, but I'm just just floored that this is a a debut novel. It's so well done, so well written. It's not perfect. Um, it does meander quite a bit in, uh, in the last third, but then it, it just picks right back up. Um, so it's not perfect, but it is still a five-star read for me. I mean, this is this may crack my top ten books. Well, uh, I'll, I'll see at the end of the year when we actually do our top ten. I would actually go ahead and like to finish this year out and then maybe do a top ten list at the end of it of our all-time favorites. Of our all-time all favorites from the year? No, or? our all-time all favorites. Hmm. Um, you know, maybe maybe get a few more books in. Uh, because I'm, I'm trying to take this year to read great books. And I'd heard great things about The Last Samurai. And uh, it's it's amazing. I'm, uh, I, I actually recommend it for everyone. It doesn't matter what type of narrative you like, what type of story you like. I think everyone should read this book, and I think about 85 or 90 percent of people would would appreciate it, and 60 percent would enjoy it. And I enjoyed the hell out of it. I'll, I'll read it again. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to read it. I really need to. I think. Yeah, Becky's um, heard me talk a lot about it. That's how she can talk about it, uh, the way that she does, because we have we've discussed this a lot. Because I I took about I don't know five days to read it or so, and it was just. God, it was a great five days. Um, so, not to cut you off, right? No, it's fine. Go ahead. <laughs> I I was walking through Barnes and Noble looking for the, a book, and this one sort of grabbed me. It's just the color. The color was really pretty, and it wasn't sitting out straight like this. It was just sort of shoved into the shelf. But I I found the the title fascinating, and the curious incident of the dog in the nighttime is about a kid named Christopher Boone. And kind of like uh, The Last Samurai, it never actually goes into this this kid's diagnosis. He's 15 years old, um, and he is an absolute genius. He is also extremely socially inept. Um, he's schedule-oriented. He, he doesn't like to be touched. So the kid, basically, the kid's autistic. He's, um, on, he's on the spectrum. Right? Yeah, he's he's on the spectrum. Did they explain um, that in the book? The, no, the, they, they don't use the terms autistic or no, spectrum. No, never once. He's in a he's in a 
you're led you're led to understand that he's in a special needs class but um, it, but but again that's another thing that is that is um that goes along with with one of the commonalities of the two books it never goes into yeah it it never what's up it with never them. tells you yeah um oh lord what was there's another thing oh another fun thing another fun thing that's really similar there's actually a lot of similarities. This kid is a genius. Um, Christo Christopher Boone is an absolute genius. And I, I don't know how, how the, uh, the academia works in England, because it's set in England, again. Again, both um, books are, yeah. Um, and this kid's going to be taking his A-levels, A-level maths is how he calls it. I'm assuming that means a really advanced math course, because he's the only one who's doing it. Um, but, uh, he's, he's very, very schedule oriented and he's very, very eye on the prize. Uh, everything is black and white with him. Things are the way they are and there's no abstract whatsoever in his world. He doesn't understand abstract. Uh, there's a, a bit that I want to read to you <laughs> so that you can get a, get an idea his t one of his teachers na is named Siobhan, um, S I O B H A N for the, those who don't know the name. Um, and throughout the book, he talks about how Siobhan, Siobhan gave him pointers on how to write this book. And it says, this is a murder mystery novel. Siobhan said that I should write something I would want to read myself. Mostly I read books about science and maths. I do not like proper novels and proper novels, <laughs> People say things like, I am veined with iron, with silver, and with streaks of common mud. I cannot contract into the firm, firm fist, which those clench who do not depend on stimulus. And there's a post, uh, 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 a, a, script, footnote. a footnote at the bottom that says, I found this in a book when Mother t took me into the library in town in 1996. It says, what does this mean? I do not know. Nor does Father, nor does Siobhan or Mr. Jevons. I have asked them. <laughs> 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 but, the, but the idea behind this book is uh, Christopher Boone he comes he's walking in his neighborhood one night and he comes across a dead dog and it's a dog he knows it's um, a dog he's played with in the neighborhood before and the dog has been murdered um, he's, he's got like a gardening fork stuck in his side and uh, the book is about Christopher fi trying to find the murderer. He's playing detective. And over the course of him trying to find the murderer of this, <laughs> of this dog, he, he discovers a lot about his neighborhood, about himself, about his family, um, and about what he's capable of doing. Um, and it's just fascinating watching this kid move through his environment. He's so sheltered, and he's so schedule-oriented, and he's he's just so, so sort of trapped in his day-to-day -day routine that everything is difficult for him. He doesn't like the color yellow or the color brown, and if he comes across these colors, even if they're in his food, he has to change these things or he can't or he can't have anything to do with them hey it sounds it's fascinating yeah it sounds like it it's really interesting the first three pages discuss how he cannot he does not understand social cues he doesn't understand emotion and it said uh siobhan uh tried to explain emotion to him with these kind of pictures um, tell him when you're when you're happy you smile when you're sad you're, you you frown, but then she showed him this picture, which is a very abstract idea. It's not good. It's not bad, and he just didn't understand it. Could not understand it, and that gives you a really really good insight to who this kid is. And I find it really really interesting the 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 juxtaposition 
between these two very, very different novels. There's so many similarities between the main characters that it... But, but way more differences. Well, yeah, sure. Yeah. But, again, we have two very, very intelligent uh, children who are trying to make sense of their world through academia and through the people who love them. And on, on one of them, he, he, was, he was dealt a, a tough hand. He was dealt a very tough hand being, being on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, and the other one is dealt a fairly normal hand in today's society. But it, uh, to me, it sounds very, very much like, um, even though they're given two completely different lives, they're just trying to make the best of what they have. And, uh, and, and one thinks is when he finds his father, that everything's going to be fine. What, what is the deal with why he wants to find the murderer of this dog? Um, be, Siobhan told him that one way he can uh, really make sense of his world is to write a book. So he wants to be a detective. Okay. He wants to, he wants to be a detective. And the, the best way to do that is to solve, solve the case of the dead dog. And it's, <laughs> I, but again, this, another similarity between these books, and without giving anything away is, um, but for the Mark Haddon book, is they're both kind of on a quest for a missing parent. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, <laughs> again, I'm, I'm kind of floored by the similarities. Yeah. Between the books. You could, you could come up with things all day. One thing that I found really fun about this is the chapters you know they're not they're you know most chapters are in numerical order his chapters they're all prime numbers yeah and in this book <laughs> there are no chapter numbers um so everything is see you'll see things like this odyssey six odyssey seven and then this symbol right here um, but there are no chapter numbers in this book so there's that's something else they have in common there are they're just totally non-traditional in so in so many ways, and I think that definitely works in the in favor of the Last Samurai, and it looks like it's going to work in favor for that book as well. And I I'm really looking forward to reading it. So if anybody out there has read these two novels or either one of these two novels, please drop us a line and let us know uh, below. And if we have any any uh, British people who watch, and and I, I know we do have a few, um, leave us a line below and tell us. What is A-level maths? <laughs> I think it probably is advanced mathematics, but uh, if you, if you let us know, we'd appreciate it. Yeah, he, yeah, he 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 included some really beyond beyond even my comprehension uh, math equations in this. Whenever there's a chance that he can give a that in, in that Mark Haddon could have given a, a, a visual aid, he did. It's uh, just constantly throughout the uh, throughout the book. It's it's this kid explaining his world, and sometimes it just totally flies right over my head. I was I was sitting here reading, going, I can't understand what he's saying. Well, there's a lot of that in it's, this book too. So, um, yeah, let it let us know what you think. Yeah, we, we love We love these books. I mean, I, I look forward to reading that one. She's going to read this one. I think she looks forward to it as well. Um, yeah, let us know what you think. Well, you, you, you were saying you'd give that five stars, right? Oh, yeah, five. I mean, yeah, this is, I think it's probably the first and only time we're, we're going to uh, uh, review two books that we both give five stars. Yeah. This is, this is a five-star book every day of the week. Yep. It's, it's really important. Um, the author is... He was a children's book author. And this was his first book for adults. And I, that amazes me. It's so sophisticated. Um, and it's... You, you get a really good look at the inside of an autistic kid's head. Because it's... Again, like I said, this he is... Everything is black and white. 
And there's, there's no shades of gray. There's no abstract to this at all. And that's, it's very strange to read uh, because of that. Because every book that you'll ever read, it has some sort of abstract thought to it. But this is not. And like every, every other sentence the, uh, with, when we're in the kid's head, every other sentence is and, and, and then I noticed, and then I went, and then I did this, and then I did this. And it has a, it gives it a very, very matter of fact um, A to B feel to it. Which I think, I think we need to. I think it's fascinating. We need to yeah. round it up. Yeah, or wind it, it up. Yeah, it's, it's getting kind of long. I'm talking. I'm sorry. <laughs> Twenty minutes. No, we, we could talk about these things forever, but we're gonna have to have to wrap it up. Give um, me give me half a minute. I'll sit down and just start reading it to you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, please, if you haven't read these, read them. The, these are these are so good. This is not the easiest one to find. Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime is a fairly easy book to find. It's a national best And this one is kind of expensive when you do find it. So if you can find a cheaper copy, I say go for it. But actually, I say if you got to pay 19 bucks for it, do it. Would it be cheaper on Kindle or is it on Kindle? I don't know. I don't even know if it's on Kindle. I don't. I don't know. I suppose that's something we probably should have looked at. Yeah, it is. And I, th I think it probably is on Kindle. But I say. Read both books, please. <laughs> let us Tell let us, us know what, what you think. think. Yeah, yeah. I, I think they're both important books. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's it. We're gonna we're gonna leave you right there, and then we'll we'll be back Friday night. Uh, it'll probably probably be really late, so you may not see it until Saturday. Um, with our March Mystery Madness, uh, um, TBRs. This is what we've been preparing for. Yeah. I have like two full shelves of mysteries. <laughs> I'm excited. Okay, we'll see you Friday. Have a good night, BookTube. Bye. Bye. <laughs>